Hey, Jason, this is Adrian. Yeah. Um, probably Firefox to open. So I'm not going to use a recording to start that neon sign. Okay. No problem. Technical issues in the video booth. Technical issues in my office. My camera is all messed up. Oh, oh seven o'clock, sir. Whenever you're ready. Okay, we're ready. All right. I would like to call this meeting to order. Can we start off with a roll call, please? Hey, Council President Corman. Here. Council Member Perez. Here. Council Member Van. Here. Council Member Benedetti. Here. Council Member O'Halloran. Here. Council Member McIrvin? Here. And Council Member Prince? Here. Roll call, Mr. Mayor, all present. Okay, thank you, Jason. So first up, we have two proclamations. The first proclamation is National Public Works Week. Okay. Proclamation, whereas public works professionals focus on infrastructure and services that are vital to a sustainable and resilient community, the public health, a high quality of life, and the well being of the people of Renton, and whereas such infrastructure and services could not be provided without the dedic dedicated efforts of public works professionals, such as engineers, airport professionals, managers, and employees at all levels of government and the private sector who are responsible for rebuilding, maintaining, improving, and protecting our city's mobility transportation networks, pipe utilities, solid waste systems, and other structures and facilities essential for our residents. And whereas it is in the public interest for the residents, civic leaders, and children of Renton to gain knowledge of and to maintain a progressive interest and understanding of the importance of public works and public works programs in our community. And whereas 2021 marks the 61st annual National Public Works Week, Stronger Together, sponsored by the American Public Works Association, whose team challenges our residents and employees to think about the role public works plays in creating a great place to live. Now, therefore, I, Armando Pavoni, mayor of the city of Renton, do hereby proclaim May 16th, the 22nd, 2021 as National Public Works Week in the city of Renton. And I encourage all residents to recognize the contributions public works professionals make every day to protect our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. And witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Renton to be affixed the 17th day of May, 2021, signed Armando Pavoni, mayor of the city of Renton. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Council President Corman. I move that council concur in the proclamation. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President Corman, seconded by Council Member McGurvin, that the proclamation be adopted as read. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Okay, motion carries. And tonight to accept the uh, proclamation is our own Jim Sykes. Oh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the city council. Uh, our theme this year for the Public Works uh, Week is Stronger Together. And how Public Works helps maintain a community's strength by working together to provide infrastructure of services and transportation, water, wastewater, stormwater treatment, and right-of-way management. Uh, Public Works provides togetherness needed for collaboration in all the stakeholders, with all the stakeholders in capital projects, infrastructure solutions, and a quality of life services. I would like to thank you, Mr. Mayor, and members of the City Council for your support over last year as the women and men in our Public Works Department, working stronger together, have provided these essential services that helps make Renton a great place to work, live, and play. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council members. Thank you very much, Jim. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the hard work everybody does in that department. Okay, next up we have uh, Mental Health Month. Okay, proclamation. Whereas one in five adult experiences a mental health problem in any given year, and one in 17 adults live with mental illness, such as major depression, bipolar disorder, or schizophrenia, and whereas approximately one half of chronic mental illness begins by the age of 14 and three quarters by, and three quarters by age 24 with long delays, sometimes decades, often occurring when symptoms first appear before individuals get help. 
and early identification and treatment can make a difference in successful management of mental illness and recovery. And whereas suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States and the second leading cause among young adults. And 90% of people who died by suicide had shown symptoms of a mental health condition, according to interviews with family, friends, and medical professionals. And whereas mental health is part of overall health, so it is important to maintain that mental health and learn the symptoms of mental illness in order to get help when needed. And whereas public education and civic activities can encourage mental health and help improve the lives of individuals and families affected by mental illness. Whereas every resident can make a difference in helping end the silence and stigma that for too long has surrounded mental illness and discouraged people from getting help. Now, therefore, I, Armando Pavoni, Mayor of the City of Renton, do hereby proclaim May 2021 to be Mental Health Month in the City of Renton, and I encourage all members of the community, businesses, schools, and community organizations to take the stigma-free pledge at www.nami.org forward slash stigma-free. And witness whereof I've here to set my hand and cause the seal of the City of Renton to be affixed the 17th day of May, 2021, signed Armando Pavoni, Mayor of the City of Renton. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council President Corman. I move the council concur in this proclamation. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council Member, Council President Corman, seconded by Council Member McGurvin, that the proclamation be adopted as read. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, motion carries. And tonight to uh, accept this proclamation is Paul Charbonneau. Uh, he's with the National Alliance on Mental Health um, from South King County. Paul, Mr. Mayor, with us? I, Mr. Mayor, I don't see him in attendance this evening. Okay. Well, we'll make sure that we get that to him um, after the meeting here, so. All right, next up we have administrative report. All right, good evening, everyone. Update from the Parks and Trails Division. Kennedale Beach Park will be closed for fence repairs between Monday, May 17th and Friday, May 21st. Boat launch permits for parking at Coulon Park can be purchased online at rentonwa.gov forward slash boat launch or call 425-430-6700 and press eight. Remember, no dogs are allowed at Gene Coulon and Kennedale Beach Parks and no bicycles on the pedestrian trail at Coulon Park. All other parks and trails allow dogs on six foot leashes, or you can visit the off leash Cedar River Dog Park at 1500 Hauser Way South. For updated information, please visit rentonwa.gov forward slash parks or contact the community services at 425 430 6600. Community Services Forestry Division will be continuing with informational mailings as part of the ongoing No Tree Topping campaign. Letters were sent recently to some residential areas where tree topping has occurred. Letters will now be mailed to commercial properties where similar tree topping problems have been noticed. This outreach will remain an information and education campaign only. No enforcement action will be undertaken at this time. Information about preventative street maintenance, traffic impact projects, and road closures happening this week can be found at rentonwa.gov forward slash traffic. All projects are weather permitting and unless otherwise noted, the streets will always remain open. Okay, thank you. Next, we're gonna open up the remote audience comment period. It remains the strong intent of the city to have public comment regularly included on our agendas. Each speaker will be given five minutes to speak. You'll be called upon by city staff member. The staff member will call the speaker's name and unmute the appropriate microphone, which will send an automatic prompt to the speaker of, you've been unmuted. This is the speaker's cue that it's their turn to speak. Please begin your comments by stating your name, city of residence and the topic you are addressing. Speakers should be able to see a timer on the screen and please finish up your comments when you see the time is close to expiring. I know we have a few signed up today. Yes, Mr. Mayor, we have seven people signed up in advance to speak today. Okay. Uh, the first person we have is Peter Duncan. Peter, go ahead. Good evening, uh, Mayor Bonnie and Council President and the other members of the council, as well as the community. Am I 
Dean Hurt? Yes, yes, we can hear yes, you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. All right, thank you. I know time is limited. My name is Peter Duncan, and I am uh, here to speak in support of uh, Kalani Bolton, who was my younger cousin, who tragically passed away uh, this uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, I'm here uh, to bring attention to uh, this mishap, this very preventable death uh, in hopes that uh, the council will take immediate action uh, in support of the family. Uh, just like to tell a, a brief story about uh, how we spent time with Kalani this summer. Uh, my daughter and I uh, traveled to Eastern Washington uh, and uh, Kalani accompanied us to Moses Lake. And, uh, you know, uh, you know we, we were able to spend time with her this, this past summer. Uh, and uh, I just wanna highlight, you know, how involved her mother was in, in her care and how concerned she was about her daughter. Uh, while we were there, Kalani, Kalani uh, had a, uh, an asthmatic incident, which I thought was pretty mild, uh, but her mother was so, uh, you know, involved in her care that she traveled from Renton to Eastern Washington, uh, you know, during this vacation trip to see about her daughter's care. Uh, so. I am the older cousin of Christina Williams, who is Kalani's mother. Uh, I am the first cousin of Kalani's grandmother, and Kalani was my third cousin. Uh, we're here this evening to, you know, bring specific attention to what happened to her the day that she visited Valley Medical Urgent Care or Benson North Benson Urgent Care. Uh, she, she visited for a routine uh, asthma incident, which she had uh, made that trip several times in the past. She was made to wait uh, for an extended amount of time. In fact, uh, in, in speaking with my family, I learned that, that was, she was turned away from the landing urgent care and then sent to that urgent care and still had to wait. Uh, the result was not pretty. Uh, she, she was finally seen after waiting over an hour, and while she was being seen, uh, instead of receiving a nebulizer treatment or something to that effect, uh, she was brought an oxygen tank, and the oxygen tank was empty, and that caused Kalani to panic. And from there, things just spiraled out of control, and my dear cousin did not walk out of the urgent care uh, alive. Uh, she was uh, transported out. She wasn't stable. Instead of going to Valley Medical Hospital, she was transported. That hospital, uh, you know, two or three minutes away from North Benson Urgent Care was bypassed. And for, you know, reasons unbeknownst to us, the family, she was transported 45 minutes away uh, to Children's uh, in, in, uh, out, out by UW. And so, uh, this is, this is a, a tragic loss to our family. Uh, it's, it's a senseless, uh, you know, preventable loss of life. And we're asking the, uh, the, the, uh, the mayor, the council president, and all council members present uh, to apply pressure on the University of Washington Valley Medical Board, the commissioners, and we're demanding a full root cause analysis uh, outlining what actually happened to Kalani. We haven't received answers. We would like uh, uh, the Honorable Mayor Pavoni and the, uh, to sit with the CEO of Valley Medical and, and, and uh, receive answers on, on the family's behalf. We also would like to uh, hear back 
from Valley Medical uh, by the end of this month. Uh, again, this was a, a tragic uh, loss uh, from something that was very routine, something that uh, you know should not have resulted in the loss of life. We believe that uh, had Kalani been of another ethnic group, namely a white girl, she probably would not uh, have uh, you know, been treated in this fashion. Uh, so there are definitely uh, concerns uh, that impact the greater community. Uh, I'm a business owner in the community. I don't reside in Renton, but I do have uh, a business uh, that is located in uh, the Triton Towers. Uh, so I'm a member of the community on that level. And uh, we're, we're asking for uh, immediate and uh, sincere efforts from this honorable body uh, to address this, this tragic loss of life and to prevent uh, similarly situated people from uh, you know, experiencing the same. And I really appreciate your, your listening. And uh, uh, we, just, we just ask for your, your immediate assistance. Thank you. The next person to speak is Francis Bowman. Francis, go ahead. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I appreciate you taking the time to um, listen to our family today. Uh, my name is Francis Bowman. I am Kalani Bolton's aunt. And um, we are here, um, as my cousin just stated, to ask the council to help us get some clarity um, on what happened to my sister's daughter, my niece. Uh, Kalani was 12 years old when she passed away. Um, she was a very bright, young, gifted, talented, beautiful young lady that had a lot of life um, and love. And so it's been very tragic and hard. Um, my sister has been through a lot dealing with this. And I just want the, to implore the council to help her get some answers. Um, the one thing that we're definitely lacking is a formal statement on what happened to my niece. It's been five months, yet there's no information. Um, they claim that they were doing an investigation. They asked my sister to come in and meet with them. However, when she did, they had no answers for her, right? It was more of a fishing expedition on their part um, than it was that they were going to give her some answers and resolution on what happened to her daughter. Um, it's very unfortunate and uh, I will briefly tell you a, a little bit about what happened that day. Um, she went down to the landing first. She was turned away there. They told her they didn't do respiratory care. Not one person in that facility ever took the time to come out and check on my niece to make sure that she was breathing okay. There is a standard procedure called ABC which is your airway, your breathing and circulation. Um, I, I, she wasn't important enough for them to come outside and check that for her, right? She was just sent off to the Benson care facility. When she got there, she sat there for over an hour. My sister called inside um, several times and then begged them to see her daughter. And she was told that it was first come first serve. Um, and she asked them, well, my daughter can't breathe. She's having a breathing problem. So are you telling me if someone's throat hurts and my daughter has a breathing problem, she has to wait? And they said, absolutely. It's first come, first serve. Well, that resulted in my niece dying in their facility because when she got in there, they didn't know what they were doing. They failed her in the area of service. They failed her in the area of getting her transported to the closest facility because she was not stable by the time she got out to Children's. She hadn't, and, and they worked on her for a long time. She didn't get air for over two hours. So the end result was that she passed away at 12 years old. And this was something so basic and something that you should know how to do if you work in a, in a medical facility. It's called an urgent care for a reason, but there was nothing urgent about the 
treatment that she got. There was nothing urgent about the facility that she went to, neither one of them, to be quite frank. Um, and so I'm looking for a couple of things. I'm looking for a statement about what happened, a formal statement from Valley uh, Medical, which is owned by UW. We all know that, right? They own the problem because they own the facilities. And I'm also looking for the council to help um, with tragic loss in, in, in the future by stating or coming up with some type of uh, legislation for the city that says that they can't call it an urgent care facility if they're not gonna provide urgent care. And so I think that is probably um, two of the bigger things that I'd like to see come out of this, but we're just looking for some support um, in that effort so that no one else has this tragic loss of life for no reason. Um, it was very preventable and it should have been prevented. And so I just ask uh, the council to help us in that effort. Um, and I thank you for your time today. And thank you for listening to us. The next person I have is Christina Williams. Christina, go ahead. Hello? Hello, we can hear you. Hi, my name is Christina Williams. I'm Kalani Bolton's mom. Um, I just wanna say um, um, uh, briefly about my daughter. Um, she was 12 years old, bright future ahead of her, talented, asthma could not stop her from doing any sports she wanted to do, gymnastics, ballet, track, nothing. So I'm just wanting to say that asthma is not a death sentence. And that's exactly what my daughter got when she went to, uh, the non-urgent care facilities that she went to. Uh, she first went to the landing, which my, her and my daughter walked up there. Um, my 24 year old daughter took her. Um, it's not normal. I mean, it's not abnormal for her to not take her either. She's been with her quite some time. And uh, they were turned away. They said they didn't do respiratory there. They were given a information direction where to go to the other clinic, which Kalani has been seen at Benson Landing. I mean, uh, yeah, Benson non-urgent care for, I'd say over 25 times in her lifetime. Um, she went there, uh, they waited. Um, they were told to wait in the car. They said it was 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes. Um, she, I called back in there because they still weren't seen yet. The lady told me um, the exact same thing, uh, a first come first serve basis. I even made an example, like my sister said, and she did say first come first serve and that's this it. Okay, well, my daughter was gonna take her elsewhere, but I said, no, by the time, you know, they'll see her in a minute and whatnot. And there's a reason to go there when you can just stay there. So she stayed, they seen her, in an hour or whatnot. And she walked in there happy, happy to get some air. We've been here. This is, I mean, it's a routine. They always have the nebulizer machine out. They did not. They had inadequate workers working there that did not know how to do their job. They had a doctor there that was panicking and on a, a, a tablet, um, while my daughter was stating she cannot breathe. Um, they had oxygen that did not come out. So they, and it was rusty. The tank was rusty. They went and got another tank or whatnot. And the ladies who were doing it did not know what they were doing. As they were doing that, my daughter's airways were getting tighter and tighter because now she's panicking. And she passed out. And when she passed out, then the air start working. And when the air start working, the doctor said, no, just let her, 
like like she was just going to come back to life with the air just coming on her. You know, I mean, they're not urgent. This urgent care needs to be shut down or there needs to be some urgency in place. Um, I, I really want to know, I want answers. I haven't got any answers from Valley Medical. I haven't got any answers from UW. I haven't got any answers, period. And as a mom, I deserve those answers when my daughter should still be here. Why did they take her not one minute away, but they took her 45 minutes away? I'll never know. But she was brain dead then. And those people, they tried their hardest with 20, 25 people around. So, I mean, it, it's unfortunate and it's definitely a tragedy. And I do not want it to happen to another child. We cannot bring Kalani back, but we can have a law in place for urgency. These, this is not an urgent care facility because if it is, why wasn't she seen? Why didn't they come out and check her vitals? These are answers that I want. I wanna know what's the protocol. Is the, I mean, I just haven't got anything from these people and they have put out the investigation things, what they're doing and they're talking to the family. They're not talking to us. We go protest there, they're calling the police on us for no reason at all, making up things. So I'm saying this, I want accountability. I want answers and I want them now. And I just want you guys to remember Kalani Bolton because she should still be here. She had a bright future ahead of her. And we are all suffering. Not a day that goes by. Um, it's not the same, but thank you. The next person we have is Selena Irving. Selena, go ahead. Hi, yes, this is Selena Irving. I'm Kwani's auntie, Christina's sister. Um, yes, I just want to say thank you for taking your time out for listening to our family because we have not had anyone that I know from the city of Renton where Kalani was born, where Kalani died, reached out and have had my sister's back, our family's back in any of this. It's been alone. It's been other cities. It's been other organizations. Cause I'm not gonna go back into you know everything that Peter, Francis and Christina um, all said because all that is true, all that is needed and all that is valid. But all I really wanna say is the, the support we need it. We need it like, you just can't imagine being a mother and being out there just alone with your own family. There's no one that feels any sympathy or empathy or, or anything. Around, I mean, there actually is, you know, there actually is some businesses where some people are. So I'm not going to say it's not, but when it comes to the medical, there's there's no one, you know, besides the black nurses that has reached out to my sister and said, let's do a march for Kalani. You know, so I was just saying the support from the city of Renton is not there for my sister. And I, I don't feel like it is. So this is a big step, just a huge step for Kalani and Kalani is just, it's just tough. You know, I was just listening to my sister and I was surprised that she didn't break down. And, and then when she did at the end, like that, that took a lot, if you guys don't know, you know, because we can't even have regular family conversations about Kalani and my sister can get through the conversation. So for her to be speaking to you guys and being out here at these marches, speaking as strong as she is, that is, that is like her persevering through this hurt and this pain and this like everything because at home she's screaming, you know, like it's not the same without my niece here. So I'm not gonna talk too long, but I know that there gotta be a way that this can make national news, that this can be out there and reach because this can't happen to someone else. This can't happen to another kid or another, any other human being at an urgent care facility 
period, anywhere, any state, anywhere. And that's what we want because Kalani, we can't save. But that's all, so thank you. Mr. Mayor, we did have a few other names, a uh, few people that have signed up in advance to speak, but I don't see them in attendance here. I do see some hands raised. Uh, the first is Holly Hill. Holly, go ahead. Mr. Mayor and council members, my name is Holly Hill and I have lived in Renton for over 20 years. <clears throat> Tonight, I join many of my fellow fellow caring constituents in support of Kalani Bolton and her family. As your, as your concerned constituent, I am appealing to you as a caring and troubled mother. I will reiterate that Kalani Bolton died from a treatable condition. In 2021, asthma should not be a death sentence. With proper care, it would not have been. The medical system failed Kalani at every turn. When Kalani and her sister arrived at urgent care at the Renton Landing that day, they didn't need policy and bureaucracy. They needed quality care with trained professionals. Those professionals should have been aware of and overcome their biases and treated Kalani as they would their own child. As a young person of color, she was up against racial injustice at every turn and it cost her her life. Why wasn't this young girl taken seriously and immediately stabilized? Why was she sent to a hospital miles away when the hospital was a mile away? All of us who love a child know that we will do anything in our power to protect them. That power is different for some of us. As we are frantically fighting for our loved one, do all of us have the thought that our advocacy will be viewed as a threat and might get us arrested or worse? Are all of us concerned that the color of our skin might get our child killed? Do we all know that racial minorities receive worse health care than non-minorities due to both explicit and implicit bias? The color of our skin would never impact access to quality care. But if we are honest with ourselves, we know it does. And if you didn't know before tonight, you know now. I am a white mother and I am pretty sure that if my child had been in Kalani's situation, the outcome would have been different. We cannot let this continue to happen. This must stop. Every single one of us listening to this comments has a choice to make. Stay silent and think this is someone else's problem or honor Kalani by standing up for her and demanding accountability and change so this doesn't happen again. I am requesting the following from Mayor Pavani and all Renton City Council members to advocate for the accountability and transparency Kalani's family deserves. Apply pressure to University of Washington Valley Medical Board Commissioners and demand a full root cause analysis outlining what happened in Kalani's case as compared to standard operating procedures a direct conversation between Mayor Pavoni and the CEO of Valley Medical Center regarding Kalani's case. And last, meet with Kalani's family by the end of May 2021 to hear their concerns. Breathe for Kalani, we are her voice. Thank you. The next person we have is Ashley Painter. Ashley, go ahead. Hello, my name is Ashley. I am a student at University of Washington. I study cancer genetics and I am the organizer um, that created Decolonizing Science, which is a local organization, mutual aid effort and podcast that highlights medical racism and racism in other fields such as science and academia. I am also here to support the family of Kalani. I feel that there was major breakdown in communication and care that needs to be addressed specifically by city council. For example, why is it that Kalani was able to be turned away in the first place? I would like to have a conversation, the family would like to have the conversation with members of city council and or the mayor to discuss what allows people to deny care to a child um, and also improving how we inspect our facilities and making sure that 
individuals in these facilities are well trained, especially when it comes to situations where children cannot breathe. I also would like to see a requirement to check someone's vitals and make sure that they are stable before they are denied care. Um, but just like many other people said, um, you know, we want to apply the pressure to University of Washington. We, again, we want to understand what the root cause was of this, who was responsible, um, and how could this be improved in the future? We want accountability and justice, but we understand that justice, the only real justice would be bringing Kalani back. We understand that that's not gonna happen, but we're not going to allow another black child to die and everybody to shrug their shoulders and look the other way. We really need attention to come to this, to protect the children of the future, which I feel that Renton City Council should be dedicated to regardless of the child's skin color. And as I said before, a direct conversation um, with the mayor and the CEO of Valley Medical Center. I also think it would be nice for the medical center to provide some sort of outline as to how they will be improving their care. And um, yeah, I just come at this from the perspective of being a student and just, you know, being a black woman myself and just wanting the best for our black children. And I really hope that you guys um, really recognize the pain that this family has been through. Um, but even more than that, recognize how persistent this family will be um, and how we intend on coming back to these meetings in the future, even as they extend to being in person. This is something we're all really dedicated to and we have to be dedicated to. And I just really hope you guys can also also care as much as we care. And it's not just about shouting blame at somebody, it's about improving this care so that this does not happen again. So that's all that I have to say, thank you. The next person is Krista Strasbaugh. Krista, go ahead. Good evening, Mary Pavoni, President Corman, council members and community. My name is Krista Strasba and I'm a Renton resident. Tonight, I am one of many speaking to you also in support of Kalani Bolton and her family. As your concerned constituent, you've heard from me multiple times, but tonight I'm appealing to you as a fellow human and as a mother. Kalani Bolton died from a treatable condition in 2021 following a national uprising for Black lives in our city. The same city that prides itself on being diverse and inclusive, the same city that adopted a resolution and a business plan to quote, strengthen its stand against racism and in support of racial equity. Our words and our ideals were not enough and on their own, they never will be. Because when Kalani and her sister arrived at urgent care in Renton that day, they did not need a performance. They needed actual and urgent care from trained professionals who understood that asthma was not the only battle she was up against. They need the same authentic care and commitment to anti-racism today from folks, including yourselves, willing to challenge status quo and prioritize people over process to prioritize people over profits. They need you and they need us. If you are a parent or you love a child in any capacity at all, it isn't difficult to imagine what the scene might have looked and felt like. The stress, the uncertainty, the questions running through our minds, all of us wondering if we're doing the right thing, if we're doing enough for our child, all of us wondering if we need to reroute, insist more, demand more. But are all of us wondering at what point our advocacy is interpreted as a threat? Are all of us internally frantic at the apparent threat of systemic racism and its power to kill our child? Are all of us painfully aware that even when access to care barriers such as insurance and family income are controlled for, racial minorities receive worse health care than non-minorities and that both explicit and implicit bias play a role? Privilege should never determine a child's human right to health care, but we have to be real because these are real people's lives. This was Kalani's life. 
If I, as a white mother with many other unearned privileges had walked into that clinic and demanded that my child be seen, I believe the response would have been different. And that is not okay. It should not be okay. We cannot let it be okay in Renton. Every single one of us connected on this call has a choice to make tonight. Stay silent and complicit with the systems that took Kalani's life or speak out, use your influence at whatever level that may be to shift power, to honor Kalani and prevent this trauma from repeating itself. So I, along with many others, am requesting the following from Mayor Pavoni and all Renton City Council members to advocate for accountability and transparency as the family deserves. Number one, apply pressure to University of Washington Valley Medical Board of Commissioners and demand a full root cause analysis outlining exactly what happened in Kalani's case as compared to standard operating procedures. The family deserves answers. Number two, a direct conversation between Mayor Pavoni and the CEO of Valley Medical Center regarding Kalani's case. And finally, please do meet with Kalani's family by the end of May of this year to hear their concerns directly. Breathe for Kalani is the family's motto. Let's work together to make that a reality. Let's work together to get them the accountability and transparency they deserve. Thank you. The next person we have is Lilia. Lilia, go ahead. Hi, good evening, Mayor Pavoni, President Corman, council members and fellow community members. My name is Lydia Nichols. I'm a resident and small business owner here in the city of Renton. I'm also a pediatric registered nurse. I serve as the vice chair for the Seattle King County NAACP Health Committee. I sit on the board for the Black Nurses Matter organization and I'm a dedicated advocate, advocate doing my part to dismantle the systems that have been upheld by white supremacy. This evening, I come to you today with the aforementioned accolades, but more than anything, as a mother, standing with the mother and family of a 12-year-old 12, 12 Kaylani Bolton. And as the family has said before, and so eloquently our community members have reiterated, I too want to reiterate Kaylani's story. Kaylani Bolton was just 12 years old. She presented to the Valley Medical Center Urgent Care in the Renton Landing, suffering from an asthma attack, and was redirected to the Urgent Care on Benson Hill. Once at Benson Urgent Care, she and her sister were instructed to wait in their car for over an hour once called into the urgent care, her level of distressful breathing heightened, her breathing became more difficult, and within minutes, she was no longer stable. With contributing substandard and incompetent care, she was then transported not to the hospital less than five minutes away, but to a hospital over 40 minutes away. While there are so many flaws in this unfortunate situation, I think if we just start from the beginning, the immediate failure is on Valley Medical Center Urgent Care, whom had the duty to minimally assess her, stabilize her, and inform the receiving urgent care that she was en route and they did none of these things. As a registered nurse and as a pediatric nurse specifically, I've experienced firsthand what the standard protocol should be when a child presents to any healthcare facility suffering from an asthma attack. Typically we give them a breathing treatment, maybe a steroid injection, then the patient is sent home with a few emergency meds and a primary care provider follow-up appointment. Kehlani never made it out. Kehlani's unfortunate passing could have been avoided if her healthcare needs were made urgent and breath in her body was considered a, consider, considered a significant factor. When we think about healthcare, specifically urgent care, most people who present with something that may not warrant an emergency visit, but it's, not, it's severe enough that the person cannot stay home and manage it. For Kehlani, asthma was nothing new to her. Her family knew how to manage it. She knew what she needed, but was not given what she needed, which was basic care. Like George Floyd and so many other black lives, Kehlani couldn't breathe and she was not heard. We can't lose any more babies to the inequities in the healthcare system, especially not to something as treatable as asthma. Kehlani fell through the cracks of the healthcare system. And if the Renton City Council really is about standing together as a community, as you've mentioned before, then we are asking each of you to stand with us. We can no longer stand around and watch any more of our babies fall through the cracks, at least not for me on my watch. So in solidarity with Kehlani's family and as the voice for Kehlani, I'm requesting the following from Mayor Pavoni and all the Renton City Council's council members to advocate for the accountability and transparency Kehlani's family deserves. We are asking for you to apply pressure to the University of Washington Valley Medical Center Board Commission Commissioners, and we are demanding a full root cause analysis on the situation. 
we, need, we are asking that you outline in that root, co root cause analysis what happened in Kehlani's case compared to standard operating procedures. We are asking for a direct conversation between Mayor Pavoni and the CEO of Valley Medical Center regarding Kehlani's case. And we're also asking that, that the Kehlani's family can meet with the, the mayor and her mother can be directed any concerns um, by the end of May that are directed and, con and her mother be contacted on this. Today I'm, I'm coming to you and I'm breathing for Kehlani because she can't stand here with us or be on this meeting to breathe herself. And I'm asking, will you breathe with her? Will you breathe for Kehlani? Because we are her voice and we all must breathe for her. Thank you. The next person we have is Dr. Linda Smith. Dr. Smith, go ahead. Dr. Smith, are you there? Okay, we may need to come back to you. Uh, the next I'm person. Here. I'm oh, here. There you are. Okay. Sorry, I was muted. Um, I'm sorry. So, um, once again, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council President and Council members and community. I am uh, Dr. Linda Smith, a Renton resident. Um, COVID has revealed the ugliness of a system that too often devalue the lives of black and brown people. As a pastor and spiritual care provider, I get to hear many of the struggles of people. For many black people here in this community, Valley is known as death hospital. I had a sister who had a stroke, was taken to Valley and kept there for five hours before she was shifted to another hospital. The receiving hospital told us that if she had gotten there sooner and, and treated, she would have not suffered so severely and would have been walking today. This is just another one of those hidden examples of the lack of care that Black family often get. A two years ago, a friend took her eight months old baby to the emergency two days in a row. On the second day, she was told to go back home. And two hours later, she took him back and he died. And it was found out later that during those two hours, if they had treated him um, with breathing, he would have survived. Dr. Daniels, formerly of Children's Hospital, took a bold stand in around November of 2020. He left the hospital, Children's Hospital and stated that the racism that impacted the lives of Blacks and that he himself saw the impact of lives being lost because of people who didn't care. Kalani Bolton should be alive tonight. Black babies and children die in hospital emergency room. This is a widespread issue throughout King County and the nation. We're looking to you, our mayor and council members to step up and help eradicate the racism that is deadly to black lives. Why do black and brown people need to die before something has changed? COVID has revealed the many injustices that severely impact the lives of people. And this is one. And we need our city government to review and hold accountable every system that impacts the safety, the health, and the well being of not just some lives, but all lives. Kalani Bolton's voice was taken from her, but we stand tonight as her voice for justice for this family. And so we ask tonight that you simply um, intervene for this family to let them know that their lives matter. And, and we know that it cannot bring Kalani back but we pray that it will help that other families will not lose their babies to mistreatment and injustice in our hospital and medical systems. Thank you. The next person we have is Joseph Todd. Joseph, go ahead. Hold 
Good evening, Mayor Pavoni, President Corman, Council Members and fellow community members. My name is Joseph Todd, and I'm a resident of Renton. I'm here in support of Kalani Bolton and her family. I'm also here to breathe for Kalani. No mother should have to bury their child. Kalani's mother joined this conversation tonight to ask for your support, to ask for you to speak for her child, to ask for you to speak for her family. I am the, I am the father of a black son. And I know that if I want him, if I take him to urgent care or the emergency room, I want him to receive the same support, the same engagement, the same care that somebody that doesn't look like him would. And I grieve, I grieve for Christina. I grieve for what she's going through with her family right now. Missing ABCs of nursing, the wait time, empty oxygen tanks, no nebulizer, referral to children's instead of uh, Valley Medical Center. Valley Medical Center is where my son was born. And I know they have the proper care to take care of kids. And he should, and, and, and Kalani should have been directed to a hospital near where she lives to take care of her. But instead, she was directed 45 minutes away to have care that ultimately resulted in her death. No mother, no father should have to bury their child. I'm going to say that one more time. No mother, no father should have to bury their child. And Christine is burying her, has buried her child. Tonight, we are definitely here to ask for your support because I know, I know you. I know you, Mayor. I know you, Randy. I know what you guys stand for. And I know that you care about your community. Otherwise, you wouldn't be sitting on council. You'd be doing something else. Just the fact that you ran for election lets me know that you care, that you care for your community. And right now, I'm asking you to care for Kalani because she deserves it. I'm requesting that the following, that the mayor and all the Ridden City Council members advocate for the accountability and transparency of Kalani. Apply pressure to the University of Washington Valley Medical Board commissioners and demand a full root cause analysis outlining what happened in Kalani's case and compared and be prepared to list out what's their standard operating procedure and a direct conversation between the mayor and the CEO because I know the mayor and the CEO of Valley have always had a relationship because it's a community hospital and you guys stand together to make sure you're providing great services for the community. And I know that they'll listen to you. And so from the bottom of my heart, I, like I said, I know Angela Benedetti, Ryan McIrvin, Kim Convon, I'm looking at you right now. And I know, I know the reason why you're on this community, why you're on this council is because you care about your community. And I'm asking you to please stand in for Kalani. Thank you. I see no other hands raised, Mr. Mayor, but I would like to ask Christina Williams to please email our city clerk's office with her contact information. Christina, that email address is cityclerk at rentonwa.gov. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. That's what I was just going to ask. And we uh, we appreciate everybody that testified tonight and and um, came to the council with with your concerns. And we will definitely be reaching out to uh, to Christina Williams and and having a discussion with her. And we do have conversations with Valley Medical and um, and we will try and do what we can, do our part to help out. So. Our hearts are with you. We all have children. All of us that are sent on this diocese have children. So, 
Okay, next up is consent agenda. There are five items for council consideration. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I'd just like to at this time ask if any council members would like any item removed for individual consideration. Um, seeing none, uh, Mr. Mayor, I move approval of the consent agenda as published. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President Corman, seconded by Council Member Gervin, that the consent agenda um, uh, be concurred with. All in favor? Actually, first, uh, any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, motion carries. Next up is unfinished business. Council President Corman. And no unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Council Member Perez. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Van. Uh, no unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Benedetti. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Halloran. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member McGurvin. Yes, Mr. Mayor, the Transportation Committee does have a committee report. Uh, this uh, committee report is regarding change order number six to a contract with the Cascade Civil Construction Company. Uh, the Transportation Aviation Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve change order number six to contract 20-001 with Cascade Civil Construction LLC for $270,000 for the Wells, or excuse me, the William Avenue South and Wells Avenue South conversion project. This is uh, TIP number 20-28. Mr. Mayor. Council Member McGurvin. Yes, I move that the council concur with the Transportation Aviation Committee committee report. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council Member McGurvin, seconded by Council Member Van, that the council concur with the Transportation Committee committee report. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, motion carries. Council Member Prince. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. We have no legislation tonight, so we are on to new business. Council President Corman. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, I have two, two meetings to announce. Uh, both of them, um, Monday, May 24th. The first is six o'clock PM. It's committed the whole, it's via video conference and one item on that agenda, it's a 2021 legislative review. And then uh, following that meeting at seven o'clock PM, our regular council meeting also via video conference. And that's all Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Council Member Perez. No new business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Van. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No new business, um, but I'd like to take the opportunity to say my condolences to um, the family and um, Ms. Uh, Williams, uh, and thank you for speaking tonight, um, for our community members for coming out and speaking, and that uh, I, I breathe for Kalani, and I appreciate you for coming out, and uh, we'll uh, stand with you all. Thank you. Council Member Benedetti. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I was uh, going to uh, thank you this evening for um, honoring uh, National Public Works Week because, uh, and I and I do thank you this for uh, honoring National Public Works Week. As the chair of the Utility um, Committee, I know that the hard work that they do. Um, it just saying so feels a little. A little hard right now. Um, it's, it's been a it's been a hard night hearing some some really powerful stories, and I just want to thank everyone for coming and telling them. That's all. No new business. Okay, Councilmember McGurvin. No, oh, oh, hold on, Councilmember Halloran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On Monday, the twenty fourth at four p.m., the Finance Committee will be meeting via video conference. We have four ag agenda items. The first is Restricted Covenants, Fawcett, First Right of Refusal, Conservation Futures Grant. Second is May Creek Trail South Project. 
The third is amendments to the file local interlocal agreement. And four is vouchers. And I also would like to thank the members of the community for sharing their stories with us. And I breathe for Kalani. Thank you. Council Member McGurban. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't have any meetings to announce. Um, I did, would also like to share my sympathies and condolences for the families and thank everyone for, for uh, speaking tonight. I know it's not an easy thing to do. Um, and I, I hope um, that there's resolution and answers that are able to be found. Thank you. Council Member Prince. Yes, Mr. Mayor, on uh, Monday, May 24th at 4.45 p.m., uh, the Planning Development Committee will meet via video conference. Uh, we have three items on the agenda. Docket 16, 16 update, housing action plan update, and emerging issues in CED. Um, and I echo my colleagues' uh, sentiments as a father. Uh, I, I feel like they're living uh, what, what is my worst nightmare. So anything that we can do would be great. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. What is the wish of the council? Um, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I too wanna say how touched I was by the testimony tonight, how saddened. And um, I, I do wanna talk with you, Mr. Mayor, about what we might be able to do. So um, with that, um, I would, and I, I wanna thank the speakers. I, I know that wasn't easy and, um, Thank you for being being with us. Um, and Mr. Mayor, with that, I move we adjourn. Second. Okay, it's been moved by uh, Council President Corman, seconded by Council Member McGurvin that we adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. We are adjourned. Have a great week.